Hello everyone, this is Alan from Technology Moments. Welcome back to our videos. This one is the second in this series dedicated to fiber optics. This whole series is dedicated to those of you who are just starting to take care of your own fiber optics infrastructure and need to address simple tasks, but also want to be able to include among those tasks troubleshooting, of course, cable termination with mechanical connectors, as well as being able to fix any damaged fiber cable. Today in this particular video we'll learn how to use optical fiber mechanical splicers as they say they do come in many shapes and colors. The important thing right here is to pick correctly uh, based on experience by other users. Never rush to buy the first one that you see. As the insertion loss that it'll generate in your network segment is greater than fusion splicing, if you have for example a very distant link where powerful transceivers are involved, you might want to hire someone to make a fusion splice. We're going to be using today this very simple set of tools, which includes an optic fiber power meter, the fiber cleaver, the Kevlar scissors, as well as the VFL or visual fault locator, and some others. This is a kit of which we'll leave the links in the description. It is not expensive at all, and yet it has proven to be very effective as it includes everything that you need for these specific tasks. We've tried to document the process as close as possible to the optical fiber and also, of course, the equipment to be used so you can actually feel like if you were close to our equipment and you'll also see a lot of close-ups using not only our camera but also this digital microscope that you might also want to include in future buys. Also this magnifying glass that might help you a lot. Of course, this is just a recommendation. They might help you even to troubleshoot any procedure that you make. Right to the point, we'll have the fiber cut completely. The wire stripper included with the kit lets you strip the wire in three different very important steps, which by the way, you can always calibrate to your specific fiber. You can use these two screws for such purpose as you can see right here. The first step is removing the cable jacket. You will remove about five centimeters or about two inches, which may seem a lot, but you'll understand why. You will position it and move it along the cable in an angle that will let you cut or better peel the jacket in an easier way. You can do it in steps of about half an inch, so you won't have to strip the jacket applying a lot of tensile force, even though fiber is good at it. The important thing is that you do not bend the fiber extremely. You will then see the Kevlar fibers exposed, which you will cut with the included Kevlar scissors. This way the buffer will be exposed. You will then use the second step of the stripper to get rid of this layer. Particularly in this part, it's important to do it in steps of about half an inch. At this point, you might think that you already have the fiber exposed, but what you're seeing here is still three components. The fiber core, the cladding, which you'll never be able to separate from the core and this coating that you will remove with the last step of your stripper. Turn the fiber so you'll get rid of the most coating that you can. Finish the process by cleaning very well the fiber. This is mostly done with a lint-free cloth and isopropylic alcohol. If you do this process with a visual fault locator connected to the end of the fiber, you'll easily notice when the fiber core and primary coating is clean. What you mostly have right here is glass. That's why it is so straight. You can bend it gently 360 degrees to check that you didn't affect the core in this process. For example, if you bend it right here and it breaks, it means that the fiber was somehow hurt and you need to do it again. In fiber, it's very important that you have some tolerance in length, so you can repeat these processes. These mechanical splicers have about a 28 mm opening, so we'll leave 14 mm of bare fiber on each side. Looking at the fiber cleaver, there are key components, and in my particular case, I had to modify the height of the blade, so you might have to do it too. You can easily do this with an Allen wrench or a screwdriver. I'm not doing it correctly right here using a Torx screwdriver, but you can see the point. Freeing the mechanism, adjust the height of the blade, and resecure. Fiber is gonna be held from here by this magnetic holder. Also, it is gonna be guided through these grooves directly to the cutter, where the fiber is gonna be held from both sides. Remember that this is basically a glass cutter, so cut has to be perfect. This is the pattern, for example, that well-cleaved fiber produces on your desktop, and this if you have cut it incorrectly. Also remember that once the quality of your cleaving deteriorates, just rotate the circular blade to the next position. It'll have the same effect as replacing the blade. Okay, now let's cut the fiber. Position the fiber, put the holder in place, that's why we said we needed a little bit more stripped. Check that the fiber goes through the groove directly to the cutter, and the most important thing, that it is held from both sides so that the blade will do its job at the distance that you want from the end. Close the cleaver and slide the blade. 
open it and you'll see that the fiber has been cut. Slide it to the trash bin and you'll be done. Remember, these are pieces of glass as thick as your hair. You wouldn't want to scratch your eyes with one of these on your finger. You can do this procedure either for single mode fiber or multi mode fiber, it doesn't matter. Actually, this splicer works for both. The diameter of both fibers, including the cladding, is the same. This is something that a lot of people do not understand. What is substantially different is the core of the fiber, the real glass fiber. The cladding is a glass like polymer in charge of keeping the light inside of the fiber core as much as possible. Its quality is as important as the quality of the core. Now we are ready to install the fiber into the mechanical splicers. Insert one end of the fiber. Once it reaches about half of the mechanism, secure the fiber sliding these little rings. It will hold the fiber very well in place. Remember that the main concept of these splicers is that the cut end of the fiber is perfectly aligned with the other end. Gently press in, secure the second fiber, and finally firmly press the alignment mechanism. This one is the most important part. You will be done. If you want to be absolutely thorough, you can even measure the attenuation caused by your work comparing it to other running fibers. So if you don't have a parallel one, measure the complete attenuation and compare it with your internal network standards. We will have successfully fixed our cable run. As we said in our previous video, mechanical splicing presents three main advantages. Faster installation, no advanced skill required, and it is substantially less expensive for small deployments. Ok guys, I really hope that this series of videos is guiding you through the process of maintaining your own fiber optic infrastructure now that fiber optics is present everywhere and the increasing need of transfer speeds inside your network is non-stop. Remember your huge support, as always, subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Good luck with your projects and see you next time.